Hello, this is Dr. Antin from RD Physics. In this video, I will explain how you can make these loudspeakers yourself. This is the CX2 by RD Physics and it's a coaxial near field monitor. The previous version, the CX1, was made using the desktop metal forest method. That's essentially 3D printing wood using sawdust and epoxy and binder jetting methodology. We wanted to make something more accessible to the wider public, something that you could print at home using your FFF printer. And also the driver that we used in the CX-1 was a proprietary one. Here we used one that you can buy in most DIY audio stores. We wanted to make the CX-2 more affordable than the CX-1 and use a passive crossover. Unfortunately, the schematics that we found online and implemented did not give satisfactory results and we got far superior results using mini DSP and by amping the loudspeakers. So unfortunately the passive crossover did not work. This loudspeaker does not have a crossover inside. It does have a four pin speak on connector so you can have your external active crossover and your by amping setup. The shape of the enclosure is similar to the CX-1 a slightly oval enclosure that you can also place on its side. We can 3D print these stands from TPU material, we call them the isopods, with two Ds to differentiate it from the Genelec ones. And if you have, for example, a TV screen, you might want these to be slightly lower, then the horizontal alignment would work for you. Um, we also made a detachable faceplate that would cover the driver flange. But actually we found that it impairs the sound quality. So the version 2 that you see here is without a detachable faceplate with the driver flush mounted on the baffle here. So this is a one piece print, no support material needed, very easy to do at home. And you get better sound quality, less diffraction issues compared to the one with the cover. I will then go through the components. Um, please use the affiliate links found in the description when you're placing orders from Sound Imports. It helps this channel keep going and it won't cost you a dime. So the components we are using here is an SB Acoustics coaxial unit with the round flange. This is the 13 centimeter one. And like I said, no passive crossover. Instead, you're going to want to use something like the mini DSP. And then, for example, the ice power amplifier modules that have uh, PSU inbuilt. So it's quite a simple circuit board that has everything you need. Power supply, two channels of amplification. And then you're going to need um, speak on connectors, the four pin ones. We use the one with the round big flange in the back with four screws not the two screw ones. Um, the ice power board, by the way, is convenient because it has the 12 volt output, so you can power your mini DSP from one of those as well. So as I mentioned, this is printed in one piece, no support material needed, no dual extrusion needed. We used a wood filled PLA filament for this, which makes it very easy to sand afterwards, so no paint. Um, and that also means that you can shred this and recycle the material if you want to. And also it makes uh, post-processing very fast. So just 15 minutes of sanding with an orbital sander and you're done. This one will take up about 1500 grams of filament, depending on your infill settings mostly. All right, how do these sound? I'd say the sound is very similar to our full range models in the sense that um, they thrive with vocals and, let's say, acoustic guitar. But once you bring on more instruments and there's more going on, like a heavy metal band, then the clarity and detail is kind of mis missing. However, in contrast to the full range models, these will tolerate significant bass boost, so you can actually equalize them to play flat down to 60 Hz. So you might not actually need a subwoofer with these guys. With the full range units that we've designed, you really do need a subwoofer to fill in the low end. 
The downside of using a two-way design is then, of course, that we have the added cost of the mini DSP. But um, we believe that it's worth it. And if you're a DIY audio enthusiast, then the mini DSP or similar DSP module will become uh, useful in other projects as well. So highly recommend it that you get that. And that makes this a very fun project to tweak and try to get the most out of. A small supplement to the video, we made the CX2 enclosure compatible with the same SCAS coaxial unit that we used for our first coaxial speaker, the CX1. And this is a high quality driver. It'll give much better sound compared to the SB Acoustics unit. But of course the price is also triple, so it's a matter of your budget. This is a proprietary driver, so if you're interested in it, uh, get in touch with us. It has a 15 centimeter cone and an aluminum dome tweeter. Superb response. It doesn't play low though, so you'd need a subwoofer. Uh, taking over from 100 Hertz approximately But a very high quality driver and all you need to do is 3d print a small gasket That'll act as an adapter and also seal the enclosure and That way this same enclosure can be used for both the SB acoustics unit and the SCAS unit All right, that's all for now. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Cheers!